Right, everyone, we're going to talk now about the AST writing task, which is something that you don't usually get to practice in any other part of your schoolwork. It's quite a unique thing. Six, it's only 600 words, but it's 600 words that you put together and try and make as succinct and sort of detailed as you can. Okay, so having just marked many hundreds of these, um, the first question we ask is where did it all go wrong? Well firstly, sometimes it isn't the kind of task that students expect. What you normally do in college is you write an essay or something where you get to research a whole lot of aspects of the topic and then you put it together using quotes and all those kinds of things that you're very confident with and good at by now. But this isn't that kind of task. The first thing that you've got to realise is that the stimulus material that's before you isn't actually for you to piece together into some kind of essay. The stimulus material is really there to tell you what the topic is. Each year they have a, a different topic. It's usually something that can either uh, you can have a strong opinion one way or the other on. And what they do is they get a whole lot of little articles, snippets and things, they always include a cartoon, and they put it together so that the idea is the students will go in, they will read it from start to finish, they'll have a really good look at it, and after doing that you'll have a very clear idea of what your topic is, but also what some of the different aspects that you could talk about are. The second thing, the stimulus material told me to do it. If you see you know, different things in the stimulus material, that's all well and good, but really the best thing to do is to take a view of the topic overall and not pick on one tiny, sometimes insignificant aspect of that material. So if there's a little cartoon that talks about um, uh, well, one year we had one on the nanny state and it talked about you know, privacy issues where the doctor said, oh, I can't tell you, sorry, but I can't tell you the sex of your baby. Um, don't write an entire essay about how it would be awkward if you didn't know the sex of your baby and how, what colour would you paint the room and how would you know what colour clothes to buy. It's obvious that those things are to make a comment on, this, on the whole topic and not to be the entire focus of your essay. So the good things that people did generally was that people really did get to grips with the topic and they really argued the topic. And that's really what it's all about. But the other thing that you need to remember, which is the bad, is don't just regurgitate everything that's in the stimulus material. In the stimulus material, there'll be you know, a number of articles and going through each one and taking the points out of it and sort of patchworking it together into some essay, that's not what they want. So don't just slavishly take everything out of the stimulus material. The ugly is what I call the, um, the very poor spelling, use of a word in a way it was not intended, terrible grammar, all those kinds of things. Even though um, this is under exam conditions, you're given enough time that you can draft it. So you must make sure that you go back when you've done your draft and check your spelling, because you're allowed to have a, a dictionary in there. Check your spelling, go over your sentences, and make sure they make sense, and please don't leave all the bad spelling in there. Okay, this is what you need to do less of. Sometimes people get a bit excited about their side of a particular topic and they write what I call the talkback radio rant. So this is especially the case of, with topics like the one we did on the nanny state or something really controversial where there's really, it's a hot topic with two sides and that quite often comes up. So don't even though it's meant to be your opinion, don't just rave on about what you think. You, you still need to make a, 
a considered argument, you still need to put some um, substantial argument in there with, with examples. So don't do the rant. Ideas all over the place. Well, technically, it doesn't have to be an essay. Occasionally, there are people who will do a narrative, some kind of story, and you can do sort of a journalistic style article. But whatever you choose, and 90 odd percent of people choose an essay, it needs to be structured. So please have an introduction, have several body paragraphs with definite points in them, and have a conclusion. Don't just make it sort of a stream of consciousness rant. Sweeping statements are the statements where you make a big call like, all people want to be rich. Well, that's obviously not the case. And all that happens when you make those sweeping statements is that it makes the marker, the person who's marking your, your um, writing task, and it is a person, it's, an, it's marked um, four times by different people, makes them think that you are just sort of grabbing for the obvious and you haven't really thought about the topic. So the last point on here comes from the one we did on university. And everybody seemed to write this. University is expensive and takes a long time. I mean, try not to state the obvious because, again, you're trying to impress the markers with your, the originality of your thinking and not just saying the same thing as everyone else. So do more of this. Please plan and structure. That is so important. Too many people um, panic a bit when they go into any kind of test. And the idea of taking you know, plenty of time at the beginning to plan it, structure it, and then, as in the next point, draft and edit, you really do come out with a much better result than if you just write it as quickly as you can and think, well, now I can leave this test and I can you know, spend the next hour down at McDonald's. So the next one, give examples. Now this is something that's caused a lot of issues for people because in a regular essay, of course, you're able to go and get research, use quotes, that kind of thing. But in this um, writing task, it's a bit difficult because we don't want you to slavishly just quote out of the stimulus material. But at the same time, if you just write what you think and don't back it up with anything, it's just simply your opinion. But what you can do is think of things that you know from your own experience and also from the subjects that you do at school. So for example, um, say you're a psychology student and you know a bit about um, you know, different kinds of learning, say, or you might know something about, um, you know, from sociology about the way society works. Or you might know of an incident from history that really is a good example of what you're trying to talk about. So use specific examples. We don't expect you to quote things word for word or know the exact dates of things. But if you can talk about something that happened, say, in the Second World War, there was an incident where such and such happened, then it tells the markers that you've really thought about the topic and have been able to apply what you've learned elsewhere to this topic. And it can be from a film you've watched. It can be from something that was on TV, from a documentary, from an article that you read, from um, something that was in the news recently, and all of these things are very useful. And that's why we ask you to make sure that you are aware of the sort of things that are on the news and issues in society, so that you can add these things to your um, writing task. Because the best um, marks usually go to students who have outside knowledge of things and are able to bring that in. You know, it might be a sport that you play that, that helps you know about something. All of these things are valid and, you know, even your own personal experience is, is a good thing to put in. And don't forget at the very start to put an interesting title. Um, it's, it's important, it's part of the um, requirements to give it a title and try and think of something interesting. So that will get the attention of the marker and a, along with a, a really interesting opening paragraph then you're sort of halfway there to getting a good mark. So the final advice, make it interesting. That's why you need to 
come up with your own ideas and your own slant on the topic because when you're a marker and you're marking a few hundred of these things, you don't want to read the same thing all the time. And so if you make it interesting and get their sort of get their interest going from the start with your wonderful title, then it, you'll certainly you know, do a lot better than people who just write the same thing as everyone else. So make it specific, and that's where you bring in your specific examples. And that, the more specific you can get, the less you're likely to do your one of those talkback radio rants. Make it memorable for all the right reasons. Now markers will sit down and mark you know, a lot of these in one go. They don't want to, we don't want to remember the ones where people wrote crazy stories or um, terrible spelling mistakes and punctuation. You want to make it memorable because you mentioned something very interesting that they really thought applied well to the topic. And so that's really important. And finally, this is my little thing to help you remember what to do in the writing task. That's very simple. You should already know the acronym AST for obvious reasons. So think of A in that it stands for analyze. Too many times people don't analyze the topic and they don't analyze sort of um, what they're asking. So analyze the topic come up with your own you know great ideas about it s stands for support which is the evidence you do need evidence and it's very important to try and think of examples that you can put in and, and keep your work specific not just general and t stands for technically correct it really does put people off and it doesn't make you seem as smart as you really are if you can't spell and you can't punctuate and you can't write a sentence correctly and obviously you need to structure it well. So those three things are very important. Analyse, support and make it technically correct. Now you've got a, over, over two hours to do this you're only writing 600 words so there's no excuse for just dashing something off. Plan it and get it right because if you can do that you'll come up with a much better writing task than, well, many of the other people, but also than you would have done if you had just written something off the top of your head.